We recently upgraded from our Scout Olympic camper to the slightly larger model, the Scout Kenai. We picked up the Kenai a few months ago, but have only slept in it six nights so far. Now sit back and let us show you everything there is to know about the Scout Kenai. Or at least everything we can cram into this video. All right, welcome to the inside of the Scout Kenai camper. So to start off, this has a L-shaped dinette. It is currently in bed and table mode. This is a modification that we did. Typically, there is a space open right here whenever you have it in table mode. And then whenever you want to put it into bed mode, you take this tabletop, put it down here, and then it actually makes it into the bed mode. But we really like having it kind of set up as bed mode with the table sticking up because we're able to shift it around. The nice thing is these Laguna tables really do move around to get out of the way. So if we're trying to cook, we have an extra cooking space or we can eat off of this or set up our, our work computer or anything like that. The next thing is the bed up here. It is a queen size bed whenever you actually slide it all the way out. Um, there's a, a wooden board on the bottom of the mattress and then a support on this side and a support on that side. So when you slide it all the way out and put in the extra pieces up at the front, it makes it into a full queen size bed. If you leave it not pulled out, it is, uh, I believe that they call it a full XL bed, which is the length of the queen size bed, but about eight to nine inches narrower. Next up is this nice ledge on the side. Uh, it really creates a great space for storage. These are little just baskets that we've taped down. And then over on this side, we have our Dometic CFX, I believe it's a 75 liter dual sided refrigerator. You can have one side be freezer, one side be fridge, both of them freezer, both of them fridge. Or one of the things we like to do when we're going on shorter trips is to actually leave one side turned off and just store bread and other dried goods in there. And then the other side, we just leave it as a fridge for all of our, our refrigeration needs. The one downside to the Kenai versus the Olympic is the doors don't actually open all the way to where you can just let them sit there. On our Olympic, we were able to flip them all the way open, load things in and out. Um, but this one, just because of where it's sitting, it actually can't stay open. Down here, we have our Yeti 1500X. This is the Goal Zero Yeti 1500X. This is the power system for the camper. It is plugged into a 175 watt solar panel that is up on the top of the camper. Overall, it's got a great inverter in it so you can charge anything off of a house plug or a USB-C plug or anything like that. And it works out pretty great. The one call out is in really cold weather, it will stop accepting a charge, which is the same for any lithium ion battery setup. Once it gets down to a certain temperature, it'll stop charging. So you just gotta keep it warm enough in the winter time to, to keep charging. Even when it is too cold, you can still use it, but you just can't recharge it until you get that temperature back up. And then over on this side down below, we have more storage cubbies. The main thing with this Kenai versus our Olympic is there is just a lot more storage inside the camper itself. Next over here are these windows. We have one on either side. They're awesome because they are large, so you can open them up all the way and get a really good cross breeze going through here. They're the same ones as that are in the Olympic and the Yoho, where they have the bug net on the one side, shade on the other side, or you can go ahead and just leave it all the way open if you don't have to worry about bugs coming in and out. And then they have a couple different settings here. Uh, you can leave them on vent mode, which is kind of you just lock them in there or leave it open and then have them just cracked a little ways. There's the medium one, and then the, all the way open is right there. We always have to leave the bug screen up though, otherwise Walker likes to jump out the window. A couple other things are these gear hooks. So you're able to hang anything you want on these gear hooks. It is a nice storage space for, you know, speakers we have hanging up there. Some people put gear nets so you can shove jackets and everything up there. Scout also does sell bags that hang here for clothing on either side. We opted to not get them for this setup just because we felt like we had enough storage inside where we didn't need that bag storage hanging up and kind of getting in the way. 
So we skipped over that for now. And then the other thing up here is our hatch. This is our entry point into the rooftop tent up on the ceiling. So whenever the rooftop tent is set up, we can take this hatch out, climb on up to the rooftop tent. And then when you get up there, you can put this hatch back in and then it has a full bed up there. So now we're at the back of the camper. I'm just gonna give you a quick tour of everything back here. So first off, we have the Newport by Dickinson Real Flame fireplace. This is a propane fireplace. It is the same one that we had in our Olympic camper and we absolutely love it. It puts off a nice ambiance because you can actually see the flame when it's running and then it also heats up this area very well. One thing to call out on it is heat rises. So the floor gets pretty cold down there um, whenever you have this fireplace running. One trick we've done is set up a little portable fan to help circulate air down in that area and that will help heat it up a little bit. Moving over here, this is kind of all additional storage that we did not have in our Olympic camper. So this is a nice big wardrobe, plenty of storage. And there's some elastic straps here to hold things in. And then similar to the gear hooks above the other areas, there is a place here to hang clothes if you wanted to as well. Moving down a little bit, there is another pretty large storage area here. And then right here is where you lift this up. And one of the options that we did not get was a toilet. So some Kenai's you can actually option out to have a toilet right here. I believe it's a cassette toilet, but we decided not to go that route just because we didn't want to have to deal with that. What we ended up doing was building a little kitty litter here for Walker. So he has an area to go and um, use the litter where in our last setup, we actually had to pull out a drawer every time he wanted to use it. Then where I'm standing is actually the shower pan. So right here is where you can set up a shower. There's some hooks here and over here and right here and one there in order to hook up the actual shower curtains. And then it actually drains down into this pan and then runs out a drain to the side of the camper. If you go on to go with the shower, they do have a rinse kit shower kit. That is an option from Scout, but we did not go that route. We are going to look into some other options if we decide we want to have an inside shower. One other special call out about the shower drain pan is ours looks a little bit different than what you get from the factory. From the factory, it comes with a black insert that sits in there and allows the water to drain through and out the side. We didn't really like the look of the black, so we ended up getting some bamboo shower mats that sit down in there. And we like the look of it a lot better. It just brightens up that area and just looks a little bit cleaner. Then shifting over here, we have our Lifesaver Jerry Can, same one in the other Scouts, and it works great. It has a filter in there so you can get water from pretty much anywhere and it's safe to drink. We do have the nozzle that comes with it, but we don't use this that much. We just tend to leave it off and then we just fill up our Nalgene's or water bottles right here and call it good. And then right here is the actual sink. If you do want to use the sink, there's a drain that goes out to the side of the camper and then you can set up a gray tank on the outside to catch all of the water that you're draining out. But right now we just basically use this as storage, but I do know some people like having the sink here. We just don't use it that frequently. Next to the sink is where the cooktop typically goes. We did not get that option for our Kenai, but we did have it on our Olympic. Uh, this is the gas line for it or the propane line. If you do get that option, we're going to go a different route on this build, but we're still working on details for that. So that will come out in a different video. And right below it is a large storage area for all your kitchen gear or any other gear that you're wanting to store there. Above the jerry can is the exhaust fan. It's a Max X fan that is powered from the Yeti Goal Zero as well. You can open it up and then there's just a little switch there to turn it on. This is actually an improvement from the previous version before they had a little solar panel fan in there that really did not suck out a lot of air. So this does a lot better at circulating the air through here. And behind the jerry can, we do have two more large storage areas. The top one has hooks on it again, so you can actually hang some clothes in here or hang gear if you wanted to. And the bottom one actually has an access door to the outside. So if you wanted to be able to access the gear from the outside or inside, you have both those options. Above me is one of the three LED strips. You simply turn it on by touching the power button. You can then brighten it up, dim it down, or turn it back off. Behind the LED light strip is the smoke detector. 
And then down at the bottom of the storage compartment is the LP alarm system, which if you have propane going in here, you always wanna make sure you have the LP alarm on just in case you have some type of leak. So now that we have the rooftop tent open, I'm able to get up here and push the hatch open. All right, so let's go ahead and climb on up through this hatch. So as you can see, it's pretty roomy up here. You can definitely easily sleep two adults or a couple kids. Nice big windows on either side. You are able to access that ladder out this window. So if you did want to go up and down the ladder, you can, but we often just go in and out the hatch just because it's a little bit safer. Now let's hop outside to check out the exterior. So on the passenger side of the camper, we have two storage compartments. The first storage compartment is the propane compartment right here. There's two big bottles of propane. This powers your fireplace, also your cooktop if you option to get a cooktop. Um, that is also propane based. And then next to it is a pretty large storage compartment that has a magnet that clips open and you can fit quite a bit of stuff in here. We expect to be able to fit both of our paddle boards, our camp chairs, and a handful of other items in here. So this is a really nice large storage area. And the last thing I wanna point out on this side is this is where the legs go in. There are four legs that slide in here and then a secondary attachment point up here just to give it a little bit more stability. And that's how you actually load the camper on and off. All right, a couple things to point out on the back of the camper. First off is the door. This is a full size RV door. So it's nice and easy to get in and out. Over on the right top is a motion sensor light. It is solar powered. And then on this side, we have an access door. This is to access that storage compartment inside. And then directly above it is a bracket that allows the 270 awning, the Batwing awning, if you get that option. There's a mounting point for that to open all the way up and hook up top. There's also a place to put some towels as well as a bump stop for the door if you open the door all the way. On the driver's side, there's not too much to point out. First off is the drain for the sink. You can open this up and then connect a hose to it down to a gray tank and then just close it on up when you're done. Up top is the mount for the ladder itself. So you can see there's a nice hook on that ladder to keep it in place. On the front top of the camper, there is a 175 watt solar panel that is flexible that is mounted to the nose of the camper. And then of course the rooftop tent. And that is about it for the outside of the camper. Well folks, that concludes our tour. Leave any Kenai questions you have in the comments below. And if you're feeling extra generous, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate it. Right, right. The other thing is we have three LED lights. I guess you can't see right now because somebody stepped in the way. We're just kind of go every... Ugh. Then shifting over here, we have and we blah 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 i don't know whatever i'm just gonna